16th of October 2024, John Hammond coming to you from Norwich, UK. I'm outside that uh, certain fast food restaurant where I was re uh, re reporting, if you like, recording uh, a video the other night about a very, very, very difficult issue to do with death, judgment, and what comes next. And you can look at that video from a day or so ago, a couple of days ago. It's uh, video 375B, uh, broadcast on the 14th of October this year. <clears throat> and it's basically on the scriptures, the premise, the premise, the idea, are you going to spend eternity bes beside still waters, Psalm 23, or are you going to be beside the lake of fire on Judgment Day, Revelation 20, 10 to 15, Revelation 21, verse 8, in the context of the whole book of Revelation. And when I was a young Christian, uh, I came to understand, uh, and bear in mind, I already knew I was going to hell. For my rebellion when I was 15, I, I left, uh, I just rebelled, I just wanted to enjoy myself. Uh, I was the figurative prodigal son 15 years old, <clears throat> I didn't want to stay with a father uh, in the father's house. I didn't want to keep going to church. Although, in hindsight, I was enjoying the youth club. It wasn't very religious there. It was the youth club. I enjoyed the Bible camps. Uh, but it, it was 15, and I wanted to explore life and enjoy myself. The prodigal son rebelled against his father. <coughs> Excuse me insulted the father, took his riches, his share of the wealth, and went off and squandered his life. Well, that was me, 15, 18 years later, 33, born again, 1984. But I knew I was going to hell. I knew it. Nobody told me, I just knew it. I thought I blew it. I thought uh, going to heaven was equated with going to church, and because I rejected going to church, which means I rejected God, I thought I was going to hell. And I certainly was. I was not born again. I was not a follower of Christ. Uh, apart from not going to church, I was not, um, I wasn't a follower of Christ. I wasn't a disciple of Christ. I remained a believer in the existence of Lord Jesus Christ. I didn't know much about the Father and I knew nothing about the Holy Spirit for those 18 years. So bear in mind, I knew from the little I knew between naught and 15, so to speak, I knew the gospel, I knew about heaven and hell, and I concluded I'm going to hell. And I just accepted it. With that maxim we read in the gospels, eat, drink, tomorrow we die. So I just enjoyed my life as what's called a hedonist a pleasure-seeking person, hedonist. The more money I got, the more money I spent on myself and my family, of course, bigger and better houses, uh, holidays, etc., 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 but self-indulgent. So that's the background. I was going to hell. I didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit, nor God the Father, didn't know about the grace of God, didn't know about the mercy of God. I didn't know about the Lamb's Book of Life, I didn't know anything except I concluded my rebellion against God and stop going to church was leading me to hell. And I just accepted it. But like I said, I was born again in 1984. And then as a young Christian, I came to understand the enormity of what happens after Judgment Day by reading the scriptures. And I read the Bible cover to cover, cover to cover, I went to Spring Harvest, I got some great Bible teaching from people outside denominationalism all the way back then, 1985 onwards. Outside denominationalism, that was crucial to my growth as a member of the body of Christ. <clears throat> and I understood the scriptures, how they work together taught by the Holy Spirit in, individually indwelling and indirectly through other people who are properly born again, baptized with the Holy Spirit, 
using the gift of teaching, which is a Holy Spirit gift. The Holy Spirit's the teacher. Using us, yes, we become known as teachers, Bible teachers, etc. But all the time, glory to God, the Holy Spirit is the teacher. Jesus is the teacher. The Spirit of Christ is in us to bring teaching to us and to share what we've learned with others. So look at that video from a couple of days ago for more background. Psalm 23, Still Waters, or Revelation 20, 10 to 15, Revelation 21, 8, The Lake of Fire. So tonight, uh, somebody sent me a video, a couple of videos to look at about a certain doctrine about the afterlife. We'll talk about that in a minute. <clears throat> But I want to focus on the title or the theme of this particular video. I'm calling it The Slippery Slope of False Doctrine, Error, Wrong Emphasis of Scripture Based on Churchgoers' Intellect and or Emotions, Based on Churchgoers' Thinking and or Feelings, which is a soulish thing, not a spiritual thing. Your soul is your mind, emotions and will. So your beliefs about life in the church, in Christ, life after death and what happens next, your beliefs can come out of your soulishness and or other people's soulishness. Meaning, what do they think? How do they think? How do they feel? about these eternal issues which bear in mind are spiritual spiritual not soulish god is spirit god is not soulish although jesus had a soul in a human body a human soul he thought and felt and acted within his human body limited by his human body but of course you know you know you know you know if you're properly born again properly saved from your sins, you know that Jesus was not created. That's a Jehovah Witness fallacy, false doctrine. Jesus was fully human, but fully God, the Spirit. And you can check on the videos elsewhere for more background on that. <clears throat> Christ was fully human, but yes, fully God, the way to the Father, but equal co-equal with the Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So, the proposition here tonight to consider, do your own Bible study, look at those scriptures, use the research tools available to you in this modern life. The slippery slope of false doctrine, <clears throat> error, wrong emphasis of scripture, based on churchgoers, intellect and or emotions, thoughts and feelings, including ministers, including Bible teachers. False doctrines, like you, you're sure you know by now, there's a, a false doctrine of universalism. It's a false doctrine. Not everybody is going to be saved. Many are called, few are chosen, remnant few, separated holy nation from all the nations and denominations universalism is a false doctrine cessationism cessationism cessationistism cessationism false doctrine the gifts of the holy spirit have never ceased we need the holy spirit we need the baptism with the Holy Spirit after we're born again, of course. Once your sins are dealt with, of course. Once your temple, your human spirit is cleaned by the blood of the Lamb, by your full, permanent, genuine and real repentance, you are cleansed in your human spirit for God's Spirit to indwell you <clears throat> within. And your teacher is within you, the Holy Spirit. He opens up the scriptures to you. And he guides you through the scriptures, the Holy Spirit breathed Bible. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me.
So those of those people in authority and power and authority over your life, your church leaders, your elders, your deacons, your house group leaders, uh, even in your family, domestic family situation, whatever they think and or feel about Scripture, you must test and weigh according to Scripture by the Holy Spirit, the teacher, who will always confirm the truth according to Scripture. All Scripture is God-breathed. And these are the days of the prophetic the prophetic body of Christ, the Ecclesia, the disciples of God, the children of God, moving in the Holy Spirit, having been born again, having been baptized with the Holy Spirit, to have received Holy Spirit gifts. Prophecy is one of the Holy Spirit gifts to eagerly desire, especially prophecy. Other Holy Spirit goes, goes with the prophecy. Prophetic wisdom. What is God saying now and for the future concerning wisdom or teaching? Again, another Holy Spirit gift of teaching. Words of knowledge to do with the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit himself and the gifts that come from the Holy Spirit. To teach scripture from God's perspective, God's heavenly perspective. <clears throat> This is a difficult, difficult subject for many people because they are thinking and or feeling about what they want eternal life to be, afterlife to be, what they want the afterlife to be because they've lost some loved ones and they want to believe there is hope for them after death. They want to believe that. So let's go through a list here of what people believe about the afterlife once this mortal life is over what happens next according to scripture according to God himself according to the Holy Spirit breathed scripture what happens next like I said read Revelation read other parts of the Bible read what Jesus said about separation sheep from goats the lamb's book of life and all these scriptures i'll attach to this video when i publish it god willing <clears throat> and the link to the previous two videos on this difficult difficult subject so here's a list excuse me <coughs> it's difficult talking without water but it's difficult with my hands i need a proper microphone holder here So, number one on the list of what happens after death from this mortal life, the first on the list is atheism. Well, of course, atheists don't believe in God, nor the devil. They don't believe in heaven, nor hell. They don't believe in the Bible. Atheists are blinded to the truth. Again, according to scripture, uh, atheists are the fool in his heart who says there is no God and if they say there is no God they'll say there is no devil there's nothing beyond this says the atheist because they can't imagine anything beyond the physical human world of human life and linked to that they can't explain where they came from they were just born they just die, and they would say, that's it. There is nothing after this mortal life, say the atheists. Well, of course, that's a lie. The fool in his heart means that Satan, the devil, is in their heart, speaking out of their mouth, denying the very existence of God. Of course, by God, we mean Father, Son, Holy Spirit, denying the existence of Jesus as God, that's a clue who's in their heart, not the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit always points to Jesus as God, pointing to the Father as God, and the Holy Spirit is God himself. 
So the atheists are completely, completely wrong, completely blind. Their mind is darkened. They have darkness in their mind, in their thinking, and in their feelings. They think and feel there's nothing after this mortal physical world because Satan has blinded them. They are blinded the minds of the unbelievers. And that's exactly who atheists are, unbelievers. So that's number one on the list. Number two, this is arbitrary, of course. I haven't put it in any particular order. But number two for me here, reincarnation. Other faiths, other religions, not Christianity, they believe in this thing called reincarnation. We've been here before, they say. We'll be here after this in a new life, blah, 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 blah. Reincarnation, it's a lie. So Satan has somehow got into their heart and minds to come up with this idea of reincarnation. A human idea which doesn't come from God, doesn't come from Jesus, not from the Holy Spirit. Therefore, it must come from the devil. Of course, every false religion is not of the Holy Spirit. And you can make your own conclusion to that. Reincarnation, a lie. Bible says man is destined to be born once, he dies and faces judgment. And you can read about the great white throne of judgment in Revelation. So that is number two arbitrarily. Number three, some people would believe uh, you go for judgment and after life, if you're not a Christian, whatever they define that as, churchgoer, Christian, good person, charitable etc good works there is a separation from god and they call it hell so they believe that after this physical life there is judgment and unless you're a good christian i put that in quotes full of good works good christian works good charitable works unless you're a good christian you are separated from god for eternity and you go to hell but good Christians, of course, they would say they go to heaven. And there's misbeliefs there. It's to do with the mind, the intellect, but not the Holy Spirit. It's not scripture. Some beliefs believe in purgatory. There's a halfway place, they say, between heaven and hell. <clears throat> and you may not be an evil, 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 evil person like Hitler. But you might be a certain believer in that certain denomination. And I think that's the only one that believes in purgatory, as far as I know. Catholics, if they believe in purgatory, it's often the case that after death, the church is left a sum of money for the church, the priesthood system, to pray for the dead. For the rich benefactors, time in purgatory to be minimized <clears throat> so he can buy his way out of purgatory by fast tracking him or her into heaven it's a lie it's a lie of course it's a lie <clears throat> so just to recap we're dealing with false doctrines which are lies not true doctrines, it's a false doctrine, it's a lie. So that's number four on the list. Purgatory, it's a lie. Can't buy your way into heaven, you can't buy your way out of hell. <clears throat> Absolute lie. Remember, that's based on thoughts and feelings, not the truth of the Holy Spirit Scripture. And then we come to, again, is arbitrary, number five in the list. It may be other beliefs, misbeliefs, wrong beliefs about life after death, after judgment. <clears throat> but then we have, we have the judgment. We have the names written in the book of life, scrolls of remembrance, sheep and goats. We have the false prophet, the beast, uh, Satan thrown into the lake of fire. And all those whose names are not written in the book of life. That's where they go. The lake of fire. And then the understanding of that. Is it's eternal. 
We are eternal beings. God has made us in his image eternal beings. Like the angels, we were created a little lower than the angels for eternity. Eternal beings created a little lower than the angels as human spiritual beings with a body, with a soul. Our spirit goes to be with God after this mortal life is over because of the blood of the Lamb having cleansed us from all sin. And that is the separation. Our sin separates us from God in this world. Our sin separates us from God. Sin has to be dealt with. The blood of the Lamb has to cleanse your spirit for you to be forgiven for your sins. For you to receive the Holy Spirit within you. The blood of the Lamb, the fire of the Holy Spirit within your spirit. And then the process of change to your thinking and feelings which might have developed all your life. I had misbeliefs, wrong beliefs. Uh, from the world, I became a worldly person steeped in worldly spirits, worldly ideology, worldly ideas, buying and selling all the things that affect everybody, the spirits of this world. Consumerism, materialism, all these things were affecting me, disaffecting me, taking me away from Jesus, materialism. That was just some young people going past, a distraction. Sorry to say it that way, but um, at this time of night, it's very difficult to speak to them. They saw the signs, Jesus loves you. One of them said, oh my God, blasphemy. Nothing I could do at this stage. So that's that. So that was number five, the eternal lake of eternal tormenting fire. Our spirit, either with God for eternity or in the lake of fire for eternity, in agony, torment, the fate of Satan and all his followers. And if you're not in Christ, that means you're under every spirit of this world and the God of this age. And, and his destiny is your dis destiny unless you've had your sin dealt with before you die. No purgatory. No prayers will get you out of purgatory. When judgment day comes, you're either in Christ or you're not in Christ. You're either true virgin looking for the bridegroom full of oil and spare oil, or you're not. And then we can talk about the figurative types of heaven and hell. Glimpses of heaven, glimpses of hell. An earthly hell can be likened to being in prison, locked away, separated from good people. You're locked away basically with bad people, criminals, sinners, and, and you're looked over by a guard system, and some of those may not be good people either. Some of them. Hopefully all of them are good people. But you know what happens in, in, the, drugs, uh, in the prison system, drugs, violence, etc., and gangs. It's a type of hell, being away from the presence of God. And usually there's a chapel that you can go and spend some quiet time in, but it's still relatively a hellish situation, locked away in prison. Figuratively, uh, women go through hell with the menopause it, as a figure of speech, a hot flush, a burning, a hot flush, a horrible, unpleasant burning, a hot flush, figuratively. Certain types of religion, they can put you through hell. They can treat you as if they are the God of heaven. And when they cut, uh, chuck you out of their religious buildings for disagreeing with their doctrines, say, they chuck you out, that is a type of casting you out of heaven. 
And of course, I, I'm referring to the kingdom halls of the Jehovah Witnesses. If you disagree with the elders and the doctrine of JWs, you're promptly cast out. I'm just checking the time. So uh, there it is, a type of casting away from heaven where the Jehovah Witness elders become like God chucking uh, Lucifer out of heaven. And that's what Jehovah Witnesses might do by their uh, by their power they run the kingdom the kingdom halls the kingdom of the jw's if you disagree with them they chuck you out and shun you excommunicate you and that is a type of being uh, expelled from heaven like lucifer was expelled from heaven and a third of the angels that's how the jehovah witnesses treat people who disagree with their false doctrine. Now, I've talked enough. We've got the two previous videos. You've got the scriptures. One of the things um, I haven't talked about is the, the purpose of this videotape. I've spoken with Trevor and, and somebody else about this false doctrine of annihilationism. The annihilation of the person after death, after judgment. The proposition is the person is annihilated. So there's no lake of fire. There's no eternal torment. There's no eternal punishment. And people who are anti-Christ, I mean of the spirit of the devil, anti-Christ, the devil is anti-Christ. People who are in that spirit of anti-Christ, they can use that to undermine the truth of the gospel. We are saved from our sins. We are saved from any sense of wanting to sin. We are saved so that we receive uh, forgiveness of sins, eternal life, the Holy Spirit, spiritual gifts, and an understanding that it's for us to control ourselves and to go and sin no more. To live at peace with all as much that, as that is possible for us, for me personally, to live at peace with all. To live at peace with you, whoever you are. And that's in this life. And by the time my life is over, like Paul, I want to be, I want to be determined, resolved, resolute to cross the finishing line like Stephen did. Like the apostles did, all of them were killed except John died of a, an old age, but he went to heaven. Judgment begins at the house of God, us, the body of Christ, the church. And I'm not talking about the institutional church, churches, the church system, denominationalism. They are, as the world is, modern day commercial organizations charitable or not, subject to the laws of this country, but remember Jesus Christ himself was not an organization, his disciples were not an organization, and they didn't set them up as a charitable organization according to the pattern of this fallen world. And I know these are difficult uh, things to consider if you've been steeped in Christian religion all your life and you believe you're a Catholic or a Protestant Christian, or you're a Jehovah Witness or a Mormon, and that's what your root is. But God can cut you free from your root by taking a branch of you. God will graft you into the cultivated olive tree, Romans 11, John 15. God is the gardener, sovereign God. So let's leave it there. I have talked for a long time. This is a difficult, difficult subject. If you've lost a loved one, family member, spouse, parents, and you want to believe there's hope for them after death, after judgment, but you're not sure whether they were saved, it's difficult for you. To, and, the, and the enemy, the devil, will give you false hope. And that undermines the truth of Scripture. <clears throat>
we must be saved from our sins. We must know Jesus as Lord, King, God, leader of our life. The Holy Spirit leads us. We must remain with Christ, not deny him, not be ashamed of Christ, his name, nor the gospel. So, Father Jesus, Lord God, we leave it there. We ask you, Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on every single person, not just the listeners here, for them to wake up, have a dream or a vision for the truth of Scripture. That time is running out. That time is running out. And today is the day of salvation. Whenever people hear this, let them hear the truth. Here comes the distraction. More young people acting out. So God bless you, obedient servants of God. Pray for us, Trevor and I, tomorrow, God willing. And we'll pursue this discussion. And Trevor and I are clear, others too, annihilationism is a false doctrine. A wrong use of scripture. Misunderstanding of people's thinking and feelings for all sorts of human reasons, but we must believe what God has said is true, is true. God bless you, obedient servants of God. God bless.